Hello viewers. I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, we'll see how you can install a virtual Windows 11 system inside your Synology NAS and use it effectively. So let's get started. As you can see here, I've already downloaded a Windows 11 ISO file and have begun setting it up to create a virtual machine. First of all, you'll need to download a Windows 11 ISO from any online source, and then use that to install Windows 11. I've downloaded the ISO from a random website and uploaded it into my Synology NAS's Virtual Machine Manager. After correctly downloading and uploading the ISO file, you'll need to go into the Virtual Machine Manager. From there, click on Virtual Machine. Then, click the Create option at the top, which will open a new window. Select the Microsoft Windows option and click Next. Now, configure the system according to your requirements. Here, I've selected a configuration that suits my needs, but you can increase the RAM and number of processor cores if you want. After that, I'm assigning permission to my default user so they can access this Windows virtual machine. Creating the virtual machine may take a little time, so be patient and wait for the process to complete. I'm double-checking everything to make sure the setup is correct, and then clicking Next. Here, you can see the virtual machine is now being created. Once it's successfully created, we'll power it on. At the top, you'll see the Power On button, click that. Then, click the Connect button, which will open a new pop-up window in a separate tab. In the new window, you'll see the Windows 11 boot menu has appeared. From here, will follow the step-by-step -step process to install Windows. In my case, I've selected the edition I prefer, but you can choose any edition that fits your needs. Based on the configuration I set earlier, I'm proceeding to complete the system installation. I'm following the traditional Windows installation process here, so I won't go into every detail again, I assume many of you are already familiar with it. It's pretty straightforward. Just follow the prompts as shown on the screen, and you should be able to complete the setup without any trouble. Since these parts of the setup process can take a considerable amount of time, especially when large files are being copied and installed, I've fast-forwarded certain sections of the video to keep things concise and prevent it from becoming boring. If you find that these steps are taking a bit longer on your end, don't worry. Just stay relaxed and be patient. Everything is working as it should, and soon you'll be able to move forward smoothly with the setup. Since these parts of the setup process can take a considerable amount of time, especially when large files are being copied and installed, I've fast-forwarded certain sections of the video to keep things concise and prevent it from becoming boring. If you find that these steps are taking a bit longer on your end, don't worry. Just stay relaxed and be patient. Everything is working as it should, and soon you'll be able to move forward smoothly with the setup. Now, the screen you're seeing is one many of you might already be familiar with. Here, you'll need to enter some personal details such as the name you want to register this computer with, a password for your system or virtual machine, and some security questions and answers to help you recover your password if needed. Since this is a tutorial video, I'm using some temporary placeholder information to complete this step quickly unexpected update during installation. At this point, you might suddenly see an update appear, just like I did. Interestingly, I haven't encountered this during installation before, but this time it showed up. It's likely because the system is connected to the internet. When Windows detects an internet connection during installation, it sometimes decides to fetch updates right away to ensure a more up-to-date and stable setup. So don't be surprised if you see something similar during your own installation. In my case, this update took quite a bit of time, so I recommend staying relaxed and letting it finish. It's completely normal for this process to take a while. As you can see, we've successfully installed Windows 11 as a virtual operating system on our Synology NAS using Virtual Machine Manager. Now, I'm going to make a few adjustments to make the experience more comfortable for daily use, like changing the aspect ratio, 
tweaking display settings, and setting it up for remote desktop access so I can use it more efficiently anytime I need. Let's get started with those customizations. And that brings us to the end of today's tutorial. I hope by now you've gained a complete understanding of how to install Windows 11 virtually on your Synology NAS and use it just like a regular system even remotely. Now, one thing we haven't covered in detail yet is how to access it from outside your home network. If your Synology NAS is linked to a Synology account, you can easily access it remotely using Synology's Quick Connect. Alternatively, you can install Tailscale and use your Tailscale ID to connect via remote desktop from anywhere. Or, you can use Cloudflare Tunnel by integrating it with your Synology system, that's another great way to securely access it from any location. That's all for today's video. If you found this helpful, don't forget to support our channel and please subscribe so you can stay connected with us for more tutorials like this one. Thanks for watching.